Good morning, my name is Fikardin Wagner and I'm the project manager of the UMB Labs. Um, we are a planned lab, so we haven't launched yet. Um, we're planning to launch by the end of November. Just to give you a brief overview, I'm going to speak about the preconditions um, that we found ourselves with, confronted with when we started, uh, the conceptual steps we took, the development steps we took, the communicational steps, and then I'm going to show a few screenshots of our beta version. Um, so the preconditions pre um, that we found ourselves confronted with were in many ways quite different than we anticipated, I guess. <laughs> um, that's an actual picture from the Austrian National Library. We're quite an old you know, library. We claim it's 650 years. Well, um, definitely old. That's, that's definitely true. Um, the labs are not part of their core business, not part of their everyday business. Um, but we have a vision plan with like a 10 year vision plan and five year strategy plans. Um, so we're a bit organized like a communist state in that way. Um, and the labs are part of the five year strategy plan. By the way, that is an actual picture I took two days ago. So we archived the internet. You can see internet one, internet two, internet three, and four. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, we are research and development. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's actually, you, you laugh, but it's true. <laughs> We're in the research and development department. If I say we, we have 1.5 people. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the one whole person. I'm just half one, half of a person. Um, we try to work with an agile setting, uh, so that means we have like um, two weekly sprints, um, two weekly sprint plannings, um, and then the first thing we try to do is to um, take some conceptual steps. So the very first thing um, was getting to know other initiatives, so getting to know other library labs, researching them online, also um, doing Skype calls with generous people such as Mahendra um, to get to know how they set up their lab, what, what they learn from doing this, um, how they organize themselves and what we could probably take away from this. Um, Funnily enough, it was the next step that we tried to getting to know the intended initiative. As I said, um, we are part of this five-year strategy, so there were strategy papers existing. Um, so there were obviously ideas what, what a lab should be or what they could have from a lab or what they would want a lab to be. Um, again, it was very interesting to find out that these plans weren't necessarily the same plans. It was essentially one plan per stakeholder why they would want to have a lab at the Austrian National Library and to find out what that is and what people would want from a lab and, what, and how we can combine these sometimes interfering ideas uh, was another challenge that we had to face. Um, getting to know the user. Um, obviously it's kind of difficult to find out your user if you haven't established a lab, um, but kind of like finding out who people could be, how, wh which kind of people already use our digital collections, how they use it, what their pain points are, um, how we could support them in a better way than we already do with our digital collections. Uh, and for me, I'm not a humanist by training, so I heard about these digital humanists, but it's kind of an ambiguous figure for me. <laughs> so it's trying to find out what that really is. Is that just a humanist that tweets occasionally, or is that more like a programmer? Yeah, I'm, I still haven't quite wrapped my head around it, but um, getting there. Getting to know the content, yeah, I think, no, and that's, again, not a joke. The first question I wrote in my notebook when I started there is, so where's the list of our digital, digital collections and who do I ask for this? And everyone was like, we don't have that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have a list of digital collections. And I was like, oh god, OK. Um, so I was literally trying to do detective work to find out where some of our digital collections are. Some of them were like lingering around in hard drives. Some of them were on different servers. Um, and I was, tr I was starting that list. I guess if the labs ever get shut down, this will be my legacy. <laughs> um, and then defining our manifesto. It's actually quite short. Um, it's literally just uh, sharing is a core principle. Um, <laughs> quality over quantity. I love that you're just like m mouthing it to me. <laughs> quality over, over quantity and let's tell good stories. Um, the development steps, like how do we try to set up development if it's just one person doing it. Um, we're trying to work component based, so doing step by step developments, also things that we can share. The other, the other strategy pr um, projects 
um, currently running in, in the research and development uh, department such as the crowdsourcing campaign for example um, which is also a team of 1.5 people so it's really essential that they work together so we try to see what can we share our user management is one of these things um, also because we want users to be able to sign up for one thing and then for another not have to do like a whole new um, login um, shared space our development share our development yeah, pretty much the whole the whole department of the of um, all of the developers share a room. The project managers share a room. Um, that proved to be quite helpful because we can exchange ideas really quickly. I mean, it also means that we sometimes really disturb each other because obviously sometimes we need to share a room as well. And then Stefan comes over and uh, we chat away next to uh, the other project manager. The communicational steps. Uh, that we undertook, we decided for shared branding with similar um, initiatives, sort of crowdsourcing campaign and our um, campaign will look rather rather similar, um, but nevertheless we decided to not go with the classical branding of the OMB. Um, that is the classical OMB logo, uh, so we inverted that one and made that our logo. Um, just to just to kind of like incorporate that we want to push things out and like focus on the outside as well and have like an empty content almost where we like we want we want people to do things and get content but uh, content back in the, into the library. Um, we defined UX guidelines. Um, they're very simple. What the first one is actually keep it simple. Don't make me think. Um, and there's a third one that would be on my present notes, but I can't remember it. Um, Oh, focus on the content. <laughs> there you go. Um, In-house communication is a big topic. Um, it's very essential that we literally go to people, go to curators and talk to them, um, make them understand that we're not here to make their life hard and difficult and create additional work for them, but rather um, that we want to promote these wonderful gems that we have at the library. Um, talking to IT department a lot, um, like literally in-house communication is a huge topic for us. Um, external communication, how do we want to communicate what we're planning to do, what we want to do in the future. Um, we will probably set up a Twitter account, we will not set up a Facebook account, all of these kind of decisions. Um, we have a Facebook account at the library so they will promote our events but we're not doing our own thing in this regard. Um, and then I'm going to show a few slides of the beat version. Um, this is <laughs> the current, the current uh, design for the beat version um, of the OMB Labs. Um, essentially we want to explain who we are in one sentence, what you can do. Um, one of our ideas that we want to illustrate everything that we have by giving little examples, by doing our own little experiments. So if we provide people with a tool or an API, we want to do one little, we want to tell one little story so people that aren't too used to these technologies can see them in action. Um, and uh, there will be three states that how users can, can use our things. Um, so if you don't register a tool, you can essentially look at things, you can download things, um, you, can you can look at the code and you can download the code. Um, if you have an account, you can do a bit more and then there will be such a thing as a verified user, which will probably in the first iteration essentially means that we know you personally and then you can, we can give you access to our GitLab and you can run code live on our GitLab, for example. Um, yeah, this is one of the the um, design examples. So we want to, as I said, tell, do, do our own little experiments, take out to tell our own little stories, and then say, um, I don't know. We work, this is an example where we we work with the languages in our historic newspapers. Um, that you can have you have three tools, three data sets that are in action in this, and two applications and tutorials. Oh yeah, tutorials are also going to be a big thing for us. We try to write tutorials for everything that we're doing. As I said, sharing is our core principle. Um, kind of similarly here, this would be the linked open data sub page. What is linked open data? Which linked open data do we have? And then the data sets listed. Um, one thing that is going to be very essential is an API we developed in-house. It's a IIIF API um, called Sasha. Um, this is, I think, the Mirador viewer. So it allows people to um, have the OCR as an annotation. It allows people to create collections for themselves. 
um, and these collections that they can create, um, which at the moment is just, um, they can only do that item by item, so book by book or um, newspaper issue by newspaper issue. We want to we want to we want to refine that and m allow people to do it page by page, and then use this collection as a basis to go into other tools. Um, one thing that we want to connect it with is Transcribus, that's a software um, developed in, in Austria actually. Um, I don't know how many people are familiar with that, but it's, well, originally it was planned to, for people to transcribe things. Um, what's quite brilliant about this software, it doesn't look very pretty, but, <laughs> but um, what's quite brilliant about it is that you can train your own models. So it, it will um, scan the OCR and you can then refine it, well, like um, correct the OCR and you can train your own model. And if you, have, if you have similar looking things, then you can run these models and use them and, and make them better and better. And maybe future dream of us would also be that people can then share their models. Um, so if they have similar looking things, similar looking fonts or that like, they could use the model of a different group who, who already trained them and refined them. Um, as I briefly mentioned before, uh, GitLab is also going, uh, sorry, uh, Jupyter Hub is also going to be quite essential for us. Um, so we'll ideally allow verified users to run their code on our Jupyter Lab, um, but we'll also provide people with code examples that they can download and run on their home computers. Um, we will use GitLab as a tool to share and communicate for users to share and communicate with each other. Um, actually, we just opened it up. Um, I have cut out the link because I was, didn't want to risk and some of you are so quick to take a picture and tweet it immediately. Um, <laughs> but you can access it now on omb.ac.at slash gitlab. Sorry, labs.omb.ac.at slash gitlab. Um, so you can look that up and uh, give us feedback if you care for that. Um, I think uh, my developer, as I speak, is uploading a few code examples <laughs> really running. So we're really like um, <laughs> very slowly uploading things, but still. Yeah. Do you synchronize that with GitHub, or is it just GitLab locally for you? It's a local. Instance. Yeah. And we're also planning to do physical events um, for people to, to connect in a physical space. Um, we're just going to do one little, very, very small thing this year when we launch, but we're planning a bigger uh, symposium next year, and I hope to see some of you there. Yep, that's me. Um, thank you very much, and please get in touch. We're looking for beta testers, so <laughs> anyone who's interested, please um, just drop me an email and I'm happy to provide you with access and you can look around and give me, tell me what we're doing wrong before we go live. Thank you. Oh, we're we doing questions immediately. Okay, sorry. So okay, we're doing questions. Five minutes for questions. <laughs> Comments. Um, yeah, so um, if I understand you correctly, from the start you're planning to have um, user management, so people register with the lab specifically, yeah. or just with the OMB? No, unfortunately it's going to be just the lab specifically. We're planning to, as I said, share it with the crowdsourcers, for example, so they have also their own campaign and own website, so you can use your login for this one. But it, Originally, we really wanted it to be the OMB login, so people that already have a user there can use it, reuse it. But it was just it proved to be impossible. <laughs> so, if you could ask about branding, yes, was that a straightforward process to invert? No, <laughs> no, definitely I mean, it's super not. Super cool. Um, that is well. I'm lucky enough that the other project manager that I shared a room with is an actual UX designer. <laughs> so it's essentially mostly his idea, but it came like it through a lot of discussions between the two of us. It's also a big discussion within the library because obviously they weren't too fond of the idea that we don't want to use the traditional design, but it's just so far away from the user group that we try to target. It's like very, you know, beautiful and but a bit antiquated, maybe. <laughs> so we were quite, you know, um, strict that we don't want to copy that. And um, yeah, it's. So you got it through your marketing. Yes. Department. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're still. We, well we have another meeting, two weeks, I think. Um, so there's still some discussions going on, but I think the logo is is proven by now. Questions? Um, would the interface of the lab only be in German? No. Nope. Um, we we planned it. Um, 
bilingual immediately. So yeah, it's going to be English and German. Quite some discussions about that when we launched uh, yeah. the lab and we finally decided only to do it in English. Oh yeah. Yeah, that, that would have been my, my wish to do that as well, but that is absolutely out of the question <laughs> with the Austrian <laughs> National Army. <laughs> and it's fair enough. I mean, it, we, we, are, we have quite, quite um, a vast collection of different languages because of our history. But um, I do understand that obviously if we're focusing on Austria, it makes sense to have it in German as well. But <coughs> I was quite like, for example, the crowdsourcing campaign is going to launch only in German. Um, so I'm at least happy that we get, we get to launch it in, in English and German. You're planning to develop tutorials yes. for each data set, is that correct? For each data set, for each tool, for each API. Um, at the, on the GitLab, I think there's already, um, well, at least the documentation for, for our IIIF API. So yeah, for code examples, at least, yeah, we're trying to be as educational as we can be. So that's going to require significant resources? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I have one other person. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> <laughs> question too. And so for the website, is it just a CMS or a static page? Or what yeah, I think it's going to be just yeah. CMS, right? It's a, it's so a, it's a home brew, yeah. very <coughs> lightweight CMS. Yeah. Could I? It'll, it'll, it'll up with JSON. Um, what are you planning for engagement? Um, for user engagement? Well, um, I'm trying to go to as many conferences as I can, talk to as many people personally as I can. Um, we, uh, we have quite a few, well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I would like to call them ambassadors, or I would, I would like to make them ambassadors, <laughs> let's put it like that. We have a few friends that we work with, we are in col collaboration with quite a few institutions in Austria, as the National Library and with the Research and Development Department. So um, I'm trying to get them to promote us a little bit as well. Um, I was already um, talking to one of the professors at the Digital Humanities Department at the University of Vienna, so we can probably um, like introduce ourselves to students there. Okay. So it's going to be a lot of running around and me talking to people, so essentially. Sort of like roadshows? Or <coughs> well, um, I don't know whether we will have the money for that, <laughs> but yeah. Roadshows in the sense that I can jump on a tram and go somewhere in Vienna and talk to me. I think that is that is that is within our budget. Um, uh, yeah. Other than that, yeah, we're also planning to do a few events. As I said, we're planning bigger um, symposium for next year, um, and I'm trying to introduce it at conferences, these kind of things. But doing events like hack events or. Um, well, the idea for now is that what I would like to do is um, to do a, like a workshop in the morning, um, maybe in the direction of machine learning, and then like try to get like quick quick results with the uh, workshop participants, and then show these results um, in the evening. We also just just last week actually um, started a collaboration with a journalist course. Um, so journalists are going to work with our historic newspapers. We will give a few lectures there, and they will also try to come up with some results in that area. What, what are the success metrics for the lab and for the parent organisation? Sorry? Success metrics <coughs> for the lab. The success matrix. Yeah. How do we uh, measure the metrics? So for the parent organisation. So this will be the last question. So. Oof. Um, hmm. Well, <laughs> we, I think we have this, we have this internal joke going um, that we would like to have more users than, um, w than people that work at the uh, Lib Lab at, at Harvard Library. I think there's 15 people that work there, so we would, we would like to have more than, more than that as users. Um, that would be great for us internally. <laughs> um, um, I think what as I said, given that, diff that the different stakeholders in the parent organizations have different visions why they would want to have a lab, um, I think for, for our general director, for example, it would be interesting if we get some media attention. Um, so that is definitely quite important. For us, it's for, for our department, it's mostly important that people that are now writing us emails that it's horrible to work with this or that uh, collection, um, that probably these emails well, de decrease a little, <laughs> or maybe if we get happy, happy notifications that it's easier now for them, something like that. Um, yeah, so that more people work with them and that they have an easier life doing that.